So let me do an overview of this article that we're going to discuss today. So the name of this article, and I'm just going to read it here, is called The Gourmet Table Salts, The Mineral Composition Showdown, and it is found in the journal Toxics. So and in a nutshell, what this talks about is it talks about all the minerals that are in these different salts. So it talks about 10 different mineral salts, and it talks about the mineral contents, what's the health properties in there. But it also talks about some contaminants that are found in there, like mercury, lead, and nickel. Let's start talking about what are mineral salts and what they do. So mineral salts, it's an unrefined salt. So most salt that most people are eating, it's refined, right? You get the mineral salt and then you refine it into just sodium chloride. And it doesn't have all the other elements and minerals that go along with it or maybe possible toxicants that go along with it, right? So that's the difference is a mineral salt is all natural, comes from the earth. It's not manipulated, it's not changed. Why would it be important to have these minerals in the salt that we have? So it's very important. So we have sodium chloride, salt, salt's good. We need sodium chloride. We need that for cellular mechanisms to work. So for us to transport a certain signal through a cell membrane, we need sodium and chloride and potassium and all that stuff. So we need it. But let's say you just take a lot of sodium chloride, but you don't have the other minerals like potassium and magnesium and calcium with it, it causes a huge imbalance. So if you're just eating a lot of table salt, it's going to cause a huge imbalance of your electrolyte status with sodium chloride and you're missing out on all the magnesium, potassium, et cetera. So that's just talking about those electrolytes. But then there's minerals like zinc and that's good for our immune system. And then we have copper that's needed for our mitochondrial function. And then we have manganese needed for mitochondrial function, all kinds of different vitamins and minerals. And most of us actually nowadays in our diets are depleted of minerals. So whatever we could do to actually get more minerals in our body to help our cells work appropriately. So what are the salts that were actually tested in this study? So they checked for Atlantic gray, Persian blue, Himalayan pink salt. They have Hawaiian black, Hawaiian pink, Malden, Mosia, smoked and Celtic salts, Bali, Bolante. These are very common salts that are actually found in Italy when I was reading the study. I don't know if this was a specific Italian study or not. I don't remember, but they're saying these are very common salts that you found in the grocery store in Italy. A lot of these, I haven't seen a lot of these I have, but uh, there's several I have never seen before. Let's talk about which salts actually had the highest amount of minerals, which all the goody stuff that we need, right? So what they found is the, the salts that had the highest amount of iron was Persian blue and Atlantic gray. And it also had the highest amount of zinc. So what's good about that? Iron is needed for a hemoglobin to be able to pick up oxygen, deliver oxygen appropriately. A lot of women tend to be low in iron and get deficient. So eating these salts could be very good for that. Also, we tend to be deficient in zinc. It's a very common mineral deficiency that we have. So we get that from the Persian blue and Atlantic gray to help boost our immune system. Another one that is highest in the amount of electrolytes like magnesium, potassium, and calcium is Himalayan pink salt. So this one's going to be actually the best one if you're like wanting to get a good amount of electrolytes. Like let's say you had a big workout, you sweated a lot. We don't go just with Gatorade, right? That's just sodium chloride. But actually what we better read the mineral salt, right? It would have the, especially Himalayan pink salt, which is going to be high in the sodium chloride, which we need. But then it's also going to be high in the magnesium, potassium, calcium to help to get a perfect balance of our electrolytes and get our cells working how they should uh, after a good workout. Which salt had the lowest amount of minerals out of all 10 that they checked? And this one is kosher salt. So it looks like that one is the lowest and probably not going to be the best option out of the 10. So which mineral salts did they check that had excessive amount of contaminants? So a couple that they checked that had way too much nickel in it was Persian blue and also the smoked Celtic salts were higher in nickel. Obviously, we don't want a lot of heavy metals in our body. It will disrupt how our cellular cells work and how we detox and et cetera. So we don't want to have high amounts of nickel. It's going to lead to health issues. Every salt they did de checked was in too high in lead, in their opinion. So lead was found in all the salts. 
And then the one that was highest in mercury that was contaminated with mercury was Hawaiian black salt. Yeah, Hawaiian black salt is high in activated charcoal. Not really a huge concern, but one thing that could be an issue is you usually take salt with food and activated charcoal is a great binder and it will bind to all the nutrients in your food. So I don't think it's really high in activated charcoal. It has probably a little bit, but it does probably decrease your nutrient absorption because of that. So like when I prescribe activated charcoal, we always want to take it two hours away from food, but you're going to be taking this salt many times with food and that's going to be an issue. Now, if you take it away from food and you're just putting it in some water and getting the health properties of the salt, great, but probably not the best thing to do with food because it will decrease nutrient absorption in the minerals that we need. So like I said in here, lead was found in all samples. That probably is like, whoa, that's really scary to most people. Lead is a huge issue. It's going to cause mental retardation. It's going to cause cardiovascular disease, cause damage to your kidneys, et cetera, right? That's what lead does. It's bad news. Now, something that we do need to understand is probably majority of the food that we're getting into our diet have minuscule amounts of lead. And that's what's really being found in majority of these mineral salts is it's finding some lead, but it's very small amounts. So we get it in our vegetables, our fruits, our grains, our juices, our water. And there's a safety parameter. It's like in water, you want to keep it less than 15 ppm. California has very strict standards on leads and they allow 100 ppm in their candies and in their baby foods and et cetera. But you're eating a lot more of these foods. So you're getting a lot more lead with that. Like how many of us are eating a lot of salt, right? It's a very small amount. We're just doing a little pinch in some of our recipes that we have. So we're not eating a lot. So to think about like how much of lead that you're getting in salt is just so minuscule. And I don't think the benefits of mineral salt and the detriments outweigh the benefits. Like we get so many good minerals that we're already depleted and we get the very minuscule amount of lead, it's worth it. And I don't think every sample that they do is going to actually have it because it's variable. So I like your comment that was done by Redmond's Real Salt, which is a salt I take a lot myself. And they are saying that they have different samples that they check and several samples don't have any lead at all, but there's some that have 200 PPM. That's the highest amount. So they do say that on their align and all their packaging and things that they have to show that it does have some lead, at least in California, you have to show that. So they have to show the highest amount, but most don't really have it. But let's talk about like 200 PPM, a little baby amount. You're allowed 15 PPB in water, but you're drinking about 72 ounces of water a day. And you're having just a little baby, maybe no more than six grams of salt a day. So you're getting so much less of lead from salt than you ever would ever get from water. Let's talk about what mineral salts I typically use. So the most common ones that I use are Redmond's Real Salt and Catholic Sea Salt. And I do have Himalayan Peak Salt quite a bit. So I like those because they tend to be high in minerals. They're high in elements. They seem like they are very clean products. And so I use a lot of these and I have noticed that I feel more energetic and more hydrated because I started using mineral salts instead of table salt. So I love these mineral salts. I would recommend them and I'm not scared because they might have a little bit of lead in them periodically from sample to sample. So like we talked about before, there are health properties that are found in mineral salts. And what conditions are specifically treated? Like we talked about Persian blue and Atlantic gray is high in iron, right? So that's going to be helping people with iron deficiency and anemia. So those could be the best salts for that. We talked about Himalayan pink salt being high in electrolytes, magnesium and potassium and calcium. So Himalayan pink salt could be a really great one for that condition if you want to get hydrated and get the appropriate electrolytes that you want. Another one that I see here, just reading here, is the one that's best for gastrointestinal health is actually Hawaiian black salt. So it stimulates digestive juices. So that one could help you digest your food, in interesting enough, which is interesting to me because it's high in activated charcoal, but they're finding that it stimulates digestive juices. So could it actually possibly help you digest your food better? Who knows? So it's a debatable issue for me. Actually, I would probably not take it, 
for gastrointestinal health. It's probably good for your gastrointestinal health per se, but not going to help you absorb your nutrients. What's more important? I would say nutrient absorption is a little more important. So salt in general is really great for gastrointestinal health. So the reason why is when you get a good amount of salt in there, let's say you have constipation, for example. This is maybe not the best thing if you tend to towards diarrhea, but if you have normal stool or if you have constipation, this can actually add more water to your stool and make it not as hard and make it easier to pass throughout your GI tract so you don't get constipated and, and you're able to eliminate more. Obviously, we want to eliminate our stool because that's uh, us eliminating all our toxins. So salt helps us actually do that. Yeah, if you want to get some more detailed dietary advice or help with treating your medical conditions that you have, you can visit our website, integrativemedica.com. Find my phone number there. Give my perceptionist a call. They set up an appointment with me, or you could just set up directly from our website. If you want to learn more about the newest and greatest health research out there, click my videos to the right. I'm Dr. Jake, and I'll see you there.